Julian, uh, last week the Institute hosted an event on engaging citizens in policy design. Why is the Institute interested in that? Well, it's a crucial question in policy making and something that came out in our policy making report. Um, what do you do to ensure that your policies are going to work for citizens? And even more importantly, how do you know that citizens want um, what you're actually doing in a policy process? Now, um, Whitehall does tend to have a very staid way of doing policy, quite a closed way. We tend to work with paper a lot. We tend to work in ways that circulate and people read papers and move on. There are actually other ways of doing policy making, and this event was to look at one of those in a bit of depth. So what did you think the key lessons were that emerged from the presentations at the event? Well, I thought one of the most important points was made by David Halpern, who's currently leading the Behavioural Insights Unit at Cabinet Office. I uh, was talking about how people react quite differently depending on how you engage them with the same uh, basic issue. So very quick engagement, the type of thing that comes through quick press releases or announcements, um, tends to produce one set of responses. More deliberative discussion, the type where you actually get to really think about the issues, can quite often produce quite nuanced reactions from the public. And the example that we were using was around user charging, something that quite often re elicits very negative responses from the public, but actually in a deliberative forum that was run by PricewaterhouseCoopers, uh, a group of 24 um, citizens went through the issues and actually came to some quite radical positions, probably more in favour of some of the radical uses of charging than the government had ever really got to in the types of things it's talked about. So going forward, what might be your advice to policymakers in government about how to use these new sorts of techniques? Well, I think what people have really got to start thinking about is how can we open up policy making processes? Um, quite often people look at these for and they dismiss them as either not really telling them much when actually anyone who goes along to these learns a huge amount more than they will do from reading the literature. Um, but secondly, people tend to see them as very costly add-ons to the policy making process. And what we seldom do is actually total up the amount of expenditure we put into creating policy the official time in it, all the overheads that go into government departments, and then think, could we actually spend the same amount of money but spend it a bit smarter so we combine something that gives us insights to where our citizens are really coming from with some of the more traditional elements of policy making process which have got to exist. So I think that's really the, the challenge for the civil service. How can we start to use the huge amounts of resources we put into policy making a little bit more smartly so that we get a wider perspective into it? And are there any risks that people need to be aware of if they go down this route? Well, you've got to be very careful with anything like this, naturally. Um, there is in any policy-making process, you can end up with your own prejudices coming straight back out the other end if you don't design them very carefully. Um, in these deliberative forums, some of the key things are the fact that you can get very strong and dominant uh, personalities. You can set up the questions in a way that uh, drives people to a result that you've predetermined. But actually, if you start working with some of the really good facilitators on this and you design them very carefully, all those things are things that you can bear in mind, you can draw out the actual conclusions, and you can find that actually, if you put a group of people together and you give them interesting and stimulating content they can really understand and get to grips with, strangely enough, you get some really powerful insights. Gina McRae, thank you very much.